Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to recolor photos using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.10 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing, which is a bestseller on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's the photo we'll be using for today's tutorial. This is a free photo you can download on Pixabay. Just hit the download button here and I went with the 1280 by 1920 size and click download. So here was the original image and this is a pink color obviously, but if I come over here, this is the recolored artwork. So this is a blue color. Here's a before, here is an after. This is a really easy technique to do and apart from the actual outlining of the object in your photo, it only takes a few minutes. So I'll come over here to the original photo to get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to separate the areas that we are not going to be recoloring from the areas that we will be recoloring. So to do this, I recommend first grabbing the paths tool and we're actually going to combine a couple of methods here and I'm not gonna dive deep into them because I've done this ahead of time, but I'll hold control and zoom in. So what you wanna do is outline this area here, which is the hand. And by the way, if you prefer using the free select tool, which you can freehand draw a selection area, by all means, go ahead and do so. But here with the pass tool, I can create curves and select these areas here. And you'll notice that when I'm making my selection, I am not selecting any part of the dress. I'm only selecting the person's skin really, so her hand and her arm. And so I'm just gonna go through here and I'll click on here and adjust the handles here to adjust my curves. Of course, I do have a tutorial on how to master the paths tool, so I recommend checking that out if you haven't already. So as you can see, this part of the dress cuts off the part we're trying to outline. So instead of trying to jump over here to this part right now, I would just finish this off here and I'll hold control Z. Just finish off selecting this little lower part here. And I'm very loosely doing this because I don't want to take up too much time, but I'll create a union between the last node and the first node by holding the control key and clicking. And I can always click and drag while holding the control key to create a handle right here and draw a curve. So that's a rough outline of the first portion. What I could do now is hold the shift key and click. And what that'll do is it'll basically create a brand new node that is not part of this connected node here, the uh, group of nodes that we created a union with. So this is a closed in shape right here. By holding the shift key, we're creating a new node. So basically these two are on the same path layer now. If I come over here to my paths dialog, this is the path we're working on right now. These are all on one path. The reason these two other paths are here is because I imported them. These are the finished paths that we're gonna be using for the remainder of the tutorial. We'll come back over here. So I held shift and created that node and now I can continue drawing. And so I want to outline the arm here. And what I did is, and I'm just going to loosely do this. So I outlined all of this and then I came in here and I didn't outline the top portion here. We're gonna use another method to do that because it's a little bit more complicated there. So you're going to outline this with your pass tool. You're gonna to come over here and we're going to cut out the portions of the dress come down here, hold control, create a union. And so now you have your two shapes here. And this is what made up my original path that I drew for the arm. So if I grab a different tool, that'll hide the path we just drew. So that was this path. This is the sloppier path. And if I come over here, this is the imported path. So this is the cleaned up version that I spent a little bit more time on. So you guys will do that for your first set of paths. And you can see here that these two are separate shapes, but they're part of the same path layer. So now what I need to do is I need to also select the main portion here and let me come away from my paths dialog and hold the space bar to move around my image. So we need to select the upper body here of our model and this is gonna be a little bit hard to do because we have these hairs sticking up here and we've also got a bunch of hair down here. So this is really going to be a challenging shape to select, but we're going to try it anyway. And there's gonna be some methods we're gonna use throughout this tutorial to fix some of these areas that are maybe a little bit harder to select. But what I'll do first is I'm gonna hold control and zoom in. So I'm going to get rid of these hairs standing up here because I don't think they contribute to the photo and all they do is complicate it. So I'll grab my heel tool here 
and I'm going to shrink the size of my brush and then I'll hold control and click over here to grab a source and then I'll just paint out these hairs that are sticking up. I'm going to hold control Z. Make sure you don't paint too many of the dark areas because it will start to give that sort of smudged look that you just saw there. So we're only going to paint the lighter areas here. So right there, there's that smudge I was talking about. So I'm being careful here not to select too many of the darker portions. So work on this hair right here. Get rid of that little smudge right there. So you're just going to do this until you've sufficiently gotten rid of these hairs sticking up. But what I'll also do now is I'm going to grab my airbrush tool and I'm going to airbrush some of those areas that maybe were causing some smudging with the heel tool. So I'll grab my airbrush tool. I've got the opacity turned all the way up to 100. And now I'm going to hold control and click to grab a color here. And then we're just going to paint over this with the airbrush tool. So you may need to just select this multiple times here. And I'm also going to actually change my brush to a hard brush here. So this is a brush with the hardness of 100. And I'm holding control again to select colors here. So you can see this harder brush is basically doing a better job of painting over these little hairs that are sticking up. And I'm sort of painting over parts of the hair right here. That's actually not what I want to do. So you can always go back and redo this. And I'm going to hit Control Z. For this one, I'm actually going to use my heel tool because it does change colors here. This is a gradient. And if we just use a single color with the airbrush tool, you're just going to see a single color streak growing, going through that gradient. And that's not what we want. So you've got hair sticking up here as well. I'm just going to leave those for now. I think you guys get the point. But I'm going to hold Control and zoom out. So now what we need to do is we need to use the foreground select tool to select the upper portion of our model here. So I'll come over here and grab my foreground select tool. And now with the free select portion of this, I'm going to uh, select the foreground, which will be the upper area. So you'll notice that I'm not selecting the entire person here against the background. I'm only selecting the portions that are not the dress. So I'll hit the enter key. And now I'm going to paint the foreground area. So I'll use the right bracket on my keyboard to increase my brush size. I'll come over here and change the foreground color to something that has a little bit more contrast. So I'll go with this green here. And make sure that your draw mode has switched over to draw foreground. You may need to manually switch that. And so now I'm going to just loosely color the foreground areas here. And again, I said loosely, so you may need to go in here and just refine this because basically the areas you see right now that are painted regular uh, may end up being part of what is going to be a selection area eventually. So the more accurate you get this portion, the better it'll look. Although we still have one more step that involves an algorithm that will try to select other portions here. So I'll just leave this as is for now and hit my enter key. So as you can see, the algorithm has made an attempt to select everything that is our foreground object. There are still areas in here that we need to draw as our foreground. So just go in through here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but go in and just refine this algorithm until you get a pretty good rough draft here. And I'm going to hold control and zoom out. So this is actually pretty decent. So I'll hit the enter key. Now we have a selection area around our foreground. And what you can do now is you can hold control and zoom in. So we have some holes here and what I can do is go to select, remove holes. So that's one step to get rid of any unnecessary selection areas in here. Something else you can do is you can come up here to your lasso tool, change the mode to add to current selection, and then just freehand draw any major areas that got left out. So this area is one example and I'm just doing a really rough job here. Hit the enter key so you can see that's refined that a little bit now. So the next thing I need to do is I need to convert this to a path. So come over here to my paths dialog and I'm going to come over here and click the selection to path option. So when I click that, it will turn our selection area into a path. So if I hit control shift A and unhide that path, here we have our path now. And what you need to do is grab your path tool, click on this path 
and you'll just refine the various nodes here of your path. Again, I go into this in much more detail in my tutorial on how to uh, erase and replace backgrounds in GIMP. And so definitely check that out if you haven't. But I'll zoom out here. So once you've refined the path, you should end up with something, and let me hide this and grab another tool. So you should end up with something like this. This is a fairly refined path. This one still has, you know, some mistakes in here, which is fine. I didn't spend too much time on this one, uh, but I did get it to a point where I thought it looked good enough. So once you've refined your path, you're going to come over here and you're going to convert your path to a selection. So make sure you're on the active path that you want to convert to a selection here. And I'm going to click this path to selection option. That'll give us one selection area here. So that's the top portion of our model. What I'll do is I'll also unhide the arm path that we drew. I'm going to click on that. I'll hold the shift key and click on the path to selection option again. So that is going to combine that area that we drew with the other area here. So now we have both of these areas selected. And now I'll come up here and hide these two paths. And then I'll come over here to our layers panel, come down here and create a new layer. And I've already named this recolor from before. I'm going to keep the layer mode normal for now and I'm going to fill this with transparency and click OK. So here is where our selection area comes in. We're now going to add a layer mask and we're going to mask out any areas that we don't want to recolor. And so now I'll come over here, right click on my recolor layer, go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask 2, I'll choose selection. And make sure your invert mask option is checked if you did select the areas that you don't want to recolor, which is what we're doing here. So I'll click add. So now you can see our layer mask over here. It's in the shape of the portions that we're leaving out. So now I'll hit control shift A to deselect that area. Next is the actual recoloring portion. So you can grab whatever color you want here. And what I'll do is I'll come over here and click on my foreground color. And I'll just go with that blue that I used or a similar blue from the beginning. So I'll go with this color here. I'll click OK. Next, I'll come over here and make sure I'm clicked on my actual layer and not the layer mask. And then I'll hit Shift B to grab the bucket fill tool or you can click on it over here in the toolbox. And now I'm just going to fill this entire layer in with this blue color. So right now, obviously, that doesn't look great. But what I'll do is I'll come over here to mode. So there's a few layer mode options I can choose from. They're all going to be very similar but slightly different. So I recommend just cycling through the options to see which one you like best. But the options are going to be HSV hue, HSL color, LCH hue, or LCH color. So I'm going to come up here to HSV hue. And what this one does is it keeps the hue of the color from the top layer and it combines that with the saturation and value from the bottom layer. So what you get for the final product here is what you see here, which is going to be everything is now blue, but the shading basically is all the same and the lightness and darkness between various parts of the shading in our image is the same. So that's how we get this recolored artwork. Again, if I come over here, I can also choose HSL color. That stands for hue, saturation, lightness. So this keeps the hue of the top layer and combines it with the saturation and lightness of the bottom layer. And of course, this is going to produce a slightly different result because lightness and value are slightly different. And if I come over here again, LCH hue, that'll be lightness, chroma, and hue. So that'll take the lightness and chroma from the bottom layer, combine that with the hue from the top layer. And the last option here is LCH color. And this layer mode is similar to HSL color, except instead of using hue, it's going to use chroma. So that is going to keep the chroma of the top layer and it's going to keep the lightness and the hue of the bottom layer. So as you can see here, it's a slightly lighter blue and all of these options are going to produce a slightly different blue uh, depending on which one you go with. I'm going to go with LCH hue just for the sake of this tutorial. And next what I need to do is I need to refine the layer mask. So as you could tell, if I hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel, this looks really rough right here. You can still see some of the original color as I switch to the move tool by hitting M. And I'm just going to move around on my image here. Hold control and zoom in. So right here as well, you can see there are some portions of the original background showing through. So we need to refine our layer mask and just clean this up a bit. And all we need to do really is come over here, click on our layer mask. We're going to hit P on our keyboard to grab the paint tool, the paintbrush tool. Come over here to brush and choose a softer brush. You can always tell it's a softer brush because it looks like a fuzzy circle. And I'm going to go with this one with the hardness of 0 to 5. Now I'm going to hold control and zoom in a bit. 
And I'm gonna click on this icon right here to reset my colors to black and white. And I'm gonna switch my color over to white. And I'm just gonna paint with this soft brush. So since this model has dark hair, we don't have to avoid the hair because dark hair isn't really going to uh, show up as blue for the most part, at least for these purposes right here. And there's usually going to be a reflection of light, so the blue from the background is going to reflect on the hair anyway. So having a little bit of blue is not a huge deal when you're recoloring some hair here. So I can hold control and zoom in, decrease the size of my brush, and we can just refine this edge a little bit. So I'm painting white right here, which is revealing the blue from this layer. And if I paint black, it's going to reveal the original layer. So hold control and zoom out, and I'm gonna come over here, hold control and zoom in. So same thing right here. And I might just actually leave this, or let me increase my brush here. You can see right there, it creates a nicer fade. So we can just have this background fading into that portion right there a little bit better. And if you hold control and zoom out, it's definitely not noticeable when you have backed out of the image a little bit. And now I'll come over here and hold control and zoom in. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna increase our brush size. And since this part is all showing already, anyway, we can paint on this and it's not a big deal as you can see, because that's already blue. So we're just painting the edges of the hair right here with a larger and very soft brush. And that's allowing us to create a nice blended effect here. So I'll decrease the size of my brush using the bracket on my keyboard, the left bracket. And I don't want to overdo painting the hair blue, but I think that looks pretty good right there. And you can always come over here and any portion where you see obvious signs of the original background, just paint over that with your soft brush. And there's our final image. So now that we're finished, let me just switch the colors out real quick to show you what this looks like with another color. So I'll come over here, select green. Let's go with like a nice neon green. Hit Shift B to grab my bucket fill tool. Come over here and click on my original layer. So click off the layer mask, fill that layer in with green, and now the girl is wearing a green dress. So as you can see, once you create a refined layer mask, it becomes pretty easy to recolor your artwork. You just have to click and change the color of that layer that you're working on. If you have multiple areas of color that you want to change the color of, just create another layer and another layer mask and just select out all of the areas that you don't want to recolor and add those uh, selection areas to your layer as a layer mask. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.